What if I told you an asteroid the size of the Empire State Building once had a real chance of striking Earth? On a specific Friday the 13th, that asteroid is Apophis, and for years it held one of the highest scores ever given on the Torino scale. But here's the twist. While its threat has now been ruled out, a new contender, discovered just months ago, still lingers with a small chance of impact in 2032. Which of these really matters for our future, and how do we even predict what comes next. Have you ever wondered how close we once came to believing Earth had a fixed doomsday date? In 2004, astronomers spotted an asteroid about 450 meters across, and it quickly became a household name in the space science world. It was called Apophis, and within weeks of its discovery, the calculations showed something unsettling. For April 13th, the year 2029, the numbers suggested a chance, small by everyday thinking, but incredibly large for asteroid science that this rock could collide with our planet. The initial estimate put the odds at 2.7%. That may sound tiny, like a throwaway decimal, but to asteroid researchers, it rang alarm bells. Most near-Earth asteroids either miss us entirely or have vanishingly small chances of impact. So low, they're basically negligible. But Apophis wasn't negligible. A 2.7% chance was enormous when you consider the scale of destruction even a mid-sized asteroid can unleash. On average, everyday life isn't built around asteroid probabilities. But in this case, the numbers were stark enough to earn Apophis one of the highest scores and ever given on something called the Torino Scale. The Torino Scale is designed to make asteroid risks understandable to the public. Picture it as a chart numbered from 0 to 10, with 0 being no risk whatsoever, and 10 representing a certain disaster that would affect the entire globe. Most most asteroids sit comfortably at zero. Some briefly creep up to level one before further observations push them back down. Apophis, though, went all the way to a level four, which meant its approach wasn't just routine, but raised a genuine possibility of major regional impact. To give that number some perspective, think of lottery odds. Millions of people gamble on lotteries, with chances one in hundreds of millions. Apophis's 2.7%, that's like saying you actually had thousands of tickets in hand. In asteroid terms, the threat felt uncomfortably real. What made it more nerve-wracking was uncertainty caused by forces we can't see. One subtle factor is called the Yarkovsky effect. Every asteroid absorbs sunlight and later radiates that energy back out as heat. You might not think this matters, but across years or decades, that gentle push can alter the path of a rock hundreds of meters wide. When early calculations suggested a possible impact, what made predictions harder was this invisible thermal nudge. It's a reminder that space hazards aren't just about huge explosions, but also about tiny details shaping orbits over time. And the orbit prediction for Apophis had another twist. In 2029, its path would bring it closer to Earth than the satellites we rely on every day. Imagine something larger than a city block flying through the zone, where GPS, TV, and weather satellites orbit. That's how close it will scrape by, about 30,000 kilometers from Earth's surface. For perspective, our geosynchronous satellites circle at roughly 36,000 kilometers, so Apophis will come even closer than many of the machines we count on for navigation and communication. That kind of near pass had never been recorded for something this large. Then scientists raised another fear, the so-called gravitational keyhole. If Apophis happened to pass through a tiny patch of space during its 2029 flyby, Earth's gravity could tweak its path just enough to set up a devastating impact on a later orbit, perhaps decades later. That keyhole was extremely narrow, no wider than a few hundred meters, but if Apophis threaded through it, the countdown to a future impact would have been locked in. That scenario kept scientists' attention fixed on refining measurements. Fortunately, further tracking and better data slowly erased the vision of doom. By 2013, astronomers had gathered enough observations to nail down Apophis's orbit. The possibility of Earth impact in 2029 was ruled out, and projections now guarantee safety from a strike for at least the next century. What started as a nightmare scenario became a surprising opportunity. Instead of worrying about annihilation, researchers saw a new kind of experiment, a chance to witness close-up how Earth's gravity affects a size 
visible asteroid structure and spin. And while Apophis's danger seems to have dissolved, the story doesn't end here, because as this massive rock shifts into a harmless scientific lesson, another asteroid, newer, smaller, and far less predictable, has now drawn the spotlight. What do you do with an asteroid that once carried the weight of a possible doomsday, only to reveal it poses no danger at all? Do we simply close the book on it and move on, or do we see it as a unique chance to learn something we've never been able to study this closely? For scientists, the answer became clear. This asteroid, Apophis, wasn't just a near miss. It was an opportunity waiting to be grasped, and at the same time, orbiting far away from Earth, NASA had a spacecraft that had already proven its worth, but now faced the question of what to do next. That spacecraft is OSIRIS-REx. Originally launched in 2016, its mission was ambitious, to travel to an asteroid called Bennu, collect a sample, and bring that material back to Earth. Not just dirt and rock, but samples billions of years old that might preserve secrets about the earliest days of the solar system. After years of carefully orbiting and maneuvering, the spacecraft succeeded, scooped up fragments from Bennu's surface, and sent them on the long trip back to Earth. When its main mission was complete, engineers faced a choice. The hardware was still in working order, still out in space, and still capable of traveling farther. Should it simply be shut down, or could it be redirected towards something else of enormous value? Rather than let a proven spacecraft retire, NASA chose to extend its use in a way that seemed almost poetic. They decided OSIRIS-REx would be guided toward Apophis, the very object that had once quarterked unease for an intergeneration of asteroid researchers. Redirecting the mission wasn't just efficient, it opened the door to a once-in-a-lifetime encounter. For the first time, a spacecraft could arrive at an asteroid of this size while it passed within the range of Earth's satellites. It's hard to overstate how rare that is. Large asteroids typically keep their distance, passing millions of kilometers away. Apophis will come so close that we'll be able to observe details on its surface with extraordinary resolution, both from the ground and from the spacecraft. The scientific value here goes far beyond curiosity. Apophis is big enough that its structure, its spin, and even its orbit could all experience noticeable changes as it flies by Earth in 2029. Earth's gravity won't just pull it along, it could reshape its interior, loosen material on its surface, or alter the way it rotates. Normally, such processes are impossible to measure in real time. With OSIRIS-REx on hand, we'll be able to track these changes directly and understand how a close brush with a planet reshapes a body that's hundreds of meters wide. That data matters because one of the hardest challenges in planetary defense is predicting how asteroids respond to small but relentless forces. We know sunlight pushes them through the Yarkovsky effect, and we know nearby planets can bend their paths. But when we actually model those behaviors, we rely heavily on assumptions. Apophis provides a living experiment, an asteroid we can measure before, during, and after a close Earth encounter to see how theory compares with reality. With that improved understanding, future predictions of asteroid motion will become sharper and more reliable. So Apophis transforms from a specter of destruction into a teacher. Instead of fearing its orbit, scientists now see in it a rare class in how gravity and sunlight shape the world of near-Earth objects. OSIRIS-REx, once meant for a single mission, now becomes our eyes and ears during an event no human generation has ever had the chance to witness so directly. This is why planetary defense is not just about deflection strategies or last resort plans. It's about readiness, about learning today, so that tomorrow's surprises don't catch us unprepared. And yet, as Apophis settles into that role of cosmic classroom, another asteroid has arrived on the scene. Smaller, recently discovered, and with an unsettling percentage attached to its odds of impact, it carries uncertainty of a very different kind. How could an asteroid no bigger than a city building stir worry across the entire scientific community? That question landed on Christmas Day of 2024, when astronomers detected a new near-Earth visitor. They named it 2024 YR4, a rock about 50 meters across, making it smaller than many skyscrapers, but large enough to draw fast concern. The discovery date gave it a dramatic entrance, a holiday surprise, but the 
the gift came with a warning tag. This object wasn't just passing through harmlessly. Calculations quickly suggested there was a chance, however slim, it might hit Earth in the year 2032. At first, the numbers sat at around 1.3%. Again, in everyday life, that sounds tiny, almost harmless. But asteroid scientists learned from Apophis that even numbers like these demand close attention. Small odds with sky-sized consequences cannot be dismissed. Within days, new observations suggested something unusual. Instead of shrinking the risk as is common with new data, the chances of impact actually rose. Suddenly, the probability was re-evaluated at around 2.3%. That rise might not look dramatic, but in the field of planetary defense, it was a loud signal. The trajectory wasn't nailed down, and uncertainty meant this newcomer could not be easily shrugged away. Why is that climb in risk so important? Typically, when scientists discover a new asteroid, the uncertainties are large at first. As more telescopes track it, the margins shrink, and the odds of collision fall close to zero. That's the usual story. With 2024 YR4, the opposite happened, at least in the opening round. That reversal vaulted it onto the Torino scale at level 3. Remember, this scale is designed for clarity. Zero means no threat, while higher numbers mean consequences grow more serious. Level 3 did not imply a certain impact, but it did carry a specific warning, an event worthy of attention by the public and by space agencies. Few asteroids have ever reached that level. To picture its size, imagine a commercial airliner from nose to tail. That length is close to the width of YR4, another way to see it, about the height of a 15-story building. It is not in the same class as Apophis, which is many times larger, but even at this smaller scale, the potential damage matters. History gives us a clear case. In 1908, an object of similar size exploded over Siberia, leveling forests across more than 800 square miles. This Tunguska event left no crater because the rock burst in the atmosphere, but the blast equaled a large nuclear explosion. It flattened trees, shattered windows hundreds of kilometers away, and would have destroyed a major city had it landed over one. That event remains the largest recent impact recorded on Earth, and 2024 YR4 sits firmly in that class of intruder. This is why the early data carried weight. A 50-meter object could not end global civilization, but crashing into land could erase an entire metropolitan area. If it hit an ocean, the energy could create local tsunamis. Suddenly, the stakes became not just about scientific curiosity, but about real local hazard. Even more, unlike Apophis, the percentage of impact risk, though still low, was higher in public view. That perception alone made it an instant headline. For the first time, modern planetary defense strategies had to activate in real time, not in training runs, not, on a, not in simulations. Telescopes worldwide turned their gaze toward YR4. Specialized software crunched orbital data nightly. Agencies coordinated not because impact was certain, but because vigilance itself is the key to preparation. The asteroid reminded researchers that the next concern might not come as a giant space rock we track for decades, but as something smaller, sneaking up quickly with just a few years' warning. Still, as more observations streamed in, confidence began to return. Scientists expect the growing data set will narrow the asteroid's orbit and push its impact odds downward, likely reaching zero, as with so many space rocks before. The Christmas surprise may turn out not to be a disaster in waiting, but another reminder. Significantly, the lesson is not just about this single asteroid. What matters most is what YR4 reveals about how we prepare, how we track, and how we respond to uncertainty before it becomes unavoidable. If the odds of an asteroid hitting Earth usually shrink to nothing once we refine their orbits, why does the world spend so much time and money preparing for the possibility? It's a fair question, because on paper, 99% of asteroid risks vanish as quickly as they appear. But the answer isn't really about statistics. It's about the one object that doesn't disappear from the risk list. Imagine a seatbelt. You don't put it on because you expect a crash every time you drive. You put it on because if the unlikely happens, the consequence without it is unthinkable. Planetary defense works in the same way, and the stories of Apophis and YR4 show us why readiness can't wait until after certainty.
reality appears. Apophis started as a false alarm, a colossal rock that looked menacing until better math proved it harmless. Rather than file it away, we now use it as a natural laboratory. YR4, in contrast, is a newcomer. It represents the uncertainty scientists wrestle with when new data doesn't point to a safe outcome right away. So we have two asteroids, one already famous for its past scare, and another small enough to hide until the last moment. One shows what happens when probability collapses into relief. The other shows how quickly vigilance has to rise when the odds tilt upward. Together, they explain why probably safe is never good enough if the impact could erase a city or more. The deeper problem is that predicting the path of space rocks is full of hidden complications. Orbits are not perfectly fixed. They stretch, bend, and twist under the pull of planets they pass. A simple Earth flyby can give an asteroid a boost like a slingshot, shifting it into a new path entirely. Then there are subtler forces. The Yarkovsky effect, that slow push from absorbed and re-radiated sunlight, can move an asteroid tens of kilometers over decades. It's invisible to the eye, but its effect adds up quietly until predictions drift away from reality. Think of it like a billiard ball on a smooth table. You can line up the shot and be confident where it will roll. Now imagine tiny air currents whispering across the felt, nudging the ball in slight random ways. After a long roll, it ends up far from where the straight line math said it should be. That's what asteroid forecasting is like. Tiny forces add noise to the system until small uncertainties grow large enough to matter. Because of that unknown, we can't just watch the sky. We need actual ways to act. Recently, a mission called DART tested the idea of a kinetic impactor. It aimed a spacecraft at a small asteroid moon and crashed deliberately, measuring how much the impact altered its orbit. The result proved the approach works. It shifted the asteroid's path in a measurable way, showing humankind could, at least for smaller targets, knock one slightly off course. The idea is simple. Change the trajectory well ahead of time, and by the time it would have reached Earth, it sails safely past. That's different from the often branded nuclear option, which tends to be the choice in movies. A nuclear blast could, in theory, shatter or push back an asteroid, but with the trade-off of generating unpredictable fragments, kinetic impactors are cleaner, fewer unknowns, more direct control. This is why Apophis and YR4 complement each other. Apophis is all about the long game. It teaches us how gravity, light, and structure affect an asteroid's evolution over decades. YR4, on the other hand, forces the issue of short-term urgency. There, we see how rapidly the world's telescopes and institutions can coordinate tracking, share updates, and prepare contingency plans. Both Fieri's matter, prediction and reaction. Data without a plan leaves us blind. A plan without data leaves us powerless. And it's not just one space agency playing watch guard. Observatories around the globe, professional and even amateur, contribute tracking information. Networks organize and share results, and international groups coordinate planning. Because an asteroid isn't a threat to one nation's borders. It's shared risk, and therefore requires shared response. So the real payoff isn't whether Apophis or YR4 strikes Earth. It's that each encounter sharpens our tools. They force us to adapt, to rethink, and to test strategies that might one day decide the outcome of a crisis. Today's near misses are tomorrow's training runs, and each one prepares us a little more for the asteroid we haven't yet discovered. Apophis proves how a rock once feared as a destroyer can become one of our most valuable teachers. What began as a threat is now a rare experiment that helps refine how we predict asteroid paths. In contrast, 2024 YR4 reminds us that even smaller discoveries can unsettle our sense of safety and test our ability to respond quickly. Together, they capture what planetary defense is really about, constant vigilance. Space is not only about wonder, it's a responsibility. The real question is simple. When the next asteroid appears on our radar, will we recognize it in time?